What's going on everybody, Nazdarachi here, coming at you guys today with a little bit of a different video. I know it's been a while, hello everybody, but I picked up Evil Dead, I found it to be quite interesting, and I figured I would make a guide video for those of you who are also fans of the asymmetrical PvP genre, or perhaps the Evil Dead, and have happened to pick up this game as well. So what this guide is going to be covering today is the Deadite, specifically the Puppeteer, I guess this could be like a sub build guide for the puppeteer himself, but we're gonna be covering how you're going to win your games playing as the solo evil player. So we're gonna spawn into the game here and we're going to basically hop right into it. This is not gonna have any real fancy edits. I'm just giving commentary along with this game. I found these players who were actually really competent. The gameplay was fresh, so I figured out you know, why not make it into a video and try and educate some people looking to how to play. So, when the game first starts out, there's a very large map. You cannot see where the survivors are, so you really do not need to worry about finding them, you know? Basically, what you're going to want to do first is grab some of these little red energy balls and kind of start building up your bar. Then, what you're going to want to do is head to one of the two marked locations on the map. You can see the, the Kandarian Dagger and some pages of the Necronomicon. Those are what's visible to you on the map. You cannot see anything that the survivors need to complete their first stage of the, the game here. So what you're gonna wanna do, grab some red orbs and head straight to one of these two points and start trapping the hell out of them. Traps in this game are invaluable, like you see me doing right, this one right here is just to burn some points on my way, because as you place traps, you're going to be building experience, which is going to be vital to upgrading your powers. So just beeline straight to one of these spawn points for one of these objectives and start trapping every available spot. Now you can see in the game that the survivors that I'm playing against have already managed to find one piece of the map. I'm not even level one yet, so they're running pretty quickly. They are either fairly competent or they don't care about looting and they just want to you know, try and win. So I've reached the pages of the Necronomicon, and as you can see, I'm gonna start hitting every single one of these trap spots right here. We want to get everything trapped up here so that the trees will swing on them if they get too close, and so the you know, zombies will, or the deadites will pop up and ambush them and also raise their fear. So these are all good things that we want, and you'll see it happened relatively quickly there, but I gained a level just from placing the traps. Again, they do give experience, and this is what I'm doing right now. I basically went into the level system and leveled up my energy, my demonic power reserves. That's the first thing I always start with to get a little bit uh, more bang for your buck out of these red orbs here. And yeah, basically floating around here and just uh, waiting. So you see on the map right there, one of them has decided to reveal themselves. They made a noise or something. They popped up on the mini map. This little map up in the top left corner is gonna be invaluable for when people spot, you know, themselves out, you're gonna wanna head straight to them at this point. I mean, I guess if they were playing a little slower, you could go trap up the other spot, but these people have already found two pieces of the map now. Normally you can get level one by placing a bunch of traps around those spots before the teammates on the other team even find like a single piece of the map. But these guys are flying. So basically at this point, they kinda revealed themselves. I beeline straight in the direction that I saw them on the map. And for a team like this, or really any team, once they reveal themselves, you are going to want to head in their direction and start slowing down their progress. This game really is a game of attrition, and you're going to want to not necessarily worry about flat out killing everybody. They have plenty of ways to heal and resurrect, but you're going to want to get them in a position where they are just wasting all their supplies. You know, they can also bring teammates back from the dead at shrines so again battle of attrition we're just trying to weather them down and slow them down you can see right there i use my power this is going to instill some fear in whoever i hit um and we basically want to get their fear levels up so we can start possessing them and throwing them off so basically i'm hovering around them while i'm grabbing as many of these red orbs as i possibly can ow bang my knee right there and what you'll see that I just do right here is I set a trap right here and we get, uh, you know, flying around. Get the, the pressure is on in this game, but you don't have to feel like super anxious about always having, you know, 
some attack going. You can spend some time flying around, getting the orbs, kind of observing the situation. But we planted that trap over there, and we got her feared up. And what I'm doing here is I'm smacking their teammate towards the trap that I set. So you can see on the screen right there, it says they've activated a trap. Basically, I pushed her in the direction of the trap. So even though they broke my possession hold on the character free, they then sprung the trap and they are getting jumped by more deadites, more zombies. At this point, I'm just trying to farm up powers. There's not much around in this area. We've been lingering here for a while. So you'll notice that happens. It takes a while for the little red orbs to respawn. And if you linger in an area too much, you'll find that you consume a lot of them. And you will have to, you know, leave the area and not, you know, camp the survivors. Or you're just going to have to kind of wait till they move on. So right now we're kind of camping this area. I've grabbed almost all the energy I can just to spawn little waves of demons to throw at them. Now this is something that's specific to the Puppet Master. I'm not sure if I've done it yet. But this specific class gets great benefits from possessing the creatures, the deadites that you spawn. You can actually possess them and play as them to land attacks. And you're going to want to be doing that a lot, you know, for any class. But specifically for the Puppeteer, it's one of the main features of this class. And you'll see that to come into play when I do that a lot later on. They're just, they're moving so quickly that I want to really slow them down, you know, before they get this third piece of the map. You will see a timer up in the top middle of the screen. If you can delay the survivors long enough for that timer to run out, you will just win by default. So that's one of the ways of just winning through attrition. Now, if they do collect both of the pages and the dagger and get to the final sequences in the game where they have to go attack the trio, the timer will disappear. And they won't have unlimited time to win, but a Fortnite-esque storm system will come in and shrink the map down and basically force them towards like the final action point. Right there on screen, you can see I had them on a choke point on a bridge kind of right there, and I hit them both to fear them up. This team has been playing pretty well about managing their fear levels and staying around lights. Um, not the flashlight, but actual lights around the level and lighting torches, which uh, allows them to keep their fear down. But now you can see I possessed this character right here, and it gives it way increased life, increased damage and allows me to do a lot more punishment on these you know characters than if you know the ai was controlling it by itself you will want to use all of your character's powers each character that you possess will have random associated powers the ability to dodge this one can't dodge but a lot of them will be able to dodge the basic tiers of zombies and uh you know lightning is a big feature you can see i just like, zapped their whole team right there so be conscious of your powers and again, you can see how much longer that, you know, that demon unit lasted when I was in possession of it as opposed to the AI controlling it. So now I know this, and they're in this area, you just constantly want to be placing down traps to um, just have more enemies spawn, which will, you know, chip away at their health even more, making them that much more vulnerable if they're, you know, you know relatively successful at progressing through the level. So you will, you know, always want to be spending your points. I definitely prioritize the energy reserves of those infernal powers so you get more, again, more value out of picking up these red orbs. And you'll want to be putting powers into your two portals. Again, you can spawn basic tier deadite zombies and the elite tier. And then the boss tier you have to play as yourself. You can't spawn that one as an AI. But every point that you put into the powers makes the enemies that you're summoning, you know, your characters more effective, and it allows you to summon them for cheaper cost, which is very, very useful. So you'll want to be leveling up, spending lots of points on your portals, as well as some of the other supportive buffs you can get. Now, at this point, they have found the entire three pieces of the map, which will lead them to the pages and the dagger. So I'm just trying to, again, slow down their progress. They're proceeding through this pretty well. And I'm just, again, at this point, there's almost no way that I get them before they get the time limit. Like, I'm, I'm set up here to lose based on time, because they're rushing through this. So, I just need to worry about doing as much damage as I possibly can, and hopefully killing them. As soon as the boss summon becomes available, you'll want to purchase it and start upgrading it. But you're going to want to save it for opportune moments. Either when the party is split up, because sometimes play a strategy of doing 2v2... 
you can get them split up and play the boss right there. You can, you know, easily take them down. Or when you get to this kind of King of the Hill segments, when they're going for these, you know, two artifacts here. You can see I'm still just hovering with them and planting traps at every available spot where I think they may go, as well as summoning demons whenever I can to just slow down their progress. We've got him feared right there, but I don't really have enough demonic energy to possess him because that little red bar in the bottom middle kind of serves as your like health bar or at least your time limit for how long you can possess things. So even if you have enough energy to you know cast the spell of possession, whatever you're left over with after with is how long you're going to be able to play as that summon, stay in control. So you generally are going to want more infernal energy in your reserve than what you may need just to cast the spell. You see, I possessed her. They're running away. I'm just shooting them in the back, trying to slow them down. They're trying to blind me with flashlights here, and then they shoot me. And, you know, they're dealing damage to each other, which, again, overall ultimately helps my goal of just chipping them away until I can ultimately hopefully kill them or, you know, stall them long enough where they can't win. This is not one of those types of games, though, where it's going to come down to a time limit. This one was quick. They played pretty well. There probably were a couple of things they could have done differently. Like, perhaps, you know, spending more time farming up gear and healing instead of just rushing to each objective. Again, we're not really trying to give too many tips on how to play as a survivor in this guide, but that's probably the main weakness here that I can see them, you know, exploiting. They have 20 minutes left. There's no reason for them to not look for, like, purple and legendary equipment and more healing. But, uh, I guess they just really wanted to win. So, I missed my ability right there. It's unfortunate. I was trying to fear her up. Again, I'm just kind of distributing the points pretty evenly. Uh, I probably should have put some points into traps earlier on. But, uh, because they're just progressing so rapidly, I kind of want to strengthen my summons. Because I've been, I've been on them for most of the entire game here. You know, something sometimes that doesn't really happen you can take a little bit longer to find them in the beginning if they don't make noise and as long as they're not finding maps as quickly as this team did you can kind of take your time in the beginning of the game to set up but i have a feeling that as the game progresses and people get better and better at it you know metas will start to develop and essentially you know people really know how to play so the game is still in its early stages here so basically they're going for the pages now i can see them there try and possess people do everything i can to just slow down their efforts here while you're in this blue ring your infernal power just automatically recharges so you can kind of let loose with your abilities a lot more and this is a great opportunity to use the boss summon you're going to want to probably waste some energy getting out some little summons as well before you summon the boss because you can't use your primary demon powers when you're inside of a summon here so, we summon the boss, and now I'm just going to run around and just try and kill everyone. This guy's got some pretty ridiculous powers with the grabs and the AoE lightning. But, um, yeah, he also is, like, invisible when he moves around. Not fully. He leaves, like, lightning trails. But it's, it's definitely frustrating going up against this guy. So, I'm basically focusing targets here. I want to try and down one. Then they'll have to split their attention between killing zombies and trying to pick up their partner. We got the one down. We basically focus targets here, and as we get one to low health, we're going to try and just stick on that one. As opposed to trying to spread out and hit everybody, you'll definitely be a lot better off if you just focus the target. And then, if you want to body camp, that's up to you. You know, I would kind of prioritize trying to just kill everybody and get as much damage in as possible instead of body camping so they can't revive. Because even if somebody dies, they can pick up their token and revive them again anyway. It's not like Dead by Daylight. I don't think the camping is going to be super useful. So, you also want to prioritize people that are inside the circle, because if you can push them all out of it, then uh, it'll stop get gaining progress. So, yeah, basically here I'm just taking possession of all my characters because they'll get additional health, they'll do more damage. So I basically want to summon as many things as I can and then start possessing them and then do as much damage as possible. This particular faction of demons uh, their Berserker, their lower class, regular class of summons, blows up when they die, which does tremendous amounts of damage here. And, uh, yeah, basically kind of trying to prevent them from getting the circle completed. Fairly sure they were going to get this one done, but this is a huge resource waste for them. They're using tons of heals, 
They're using, you know, getting down, having to pick each other back up. Which is just overall, again, battle of attrition, wearing them down to the point where I will be able to take them all down. That's the, the overall goal here. And that's how it ends up, you know. Spoilers, I, I win this game. But, um, I'm just trying to keep things as hectic and as dangerous as possible for these guys. I well, triggered most of the traps inside the circle. So there wasn't really much I had to worry about in terms of putting more traps down. It's just kind of like a, a fight at this point, like a wave defense almost for them. But I like how you, the player, as the bad guy, can kind of plan it out. You know, when and where to summon things and how to approach the situation. And they have me stunned right here. You know, I'm playing as the elite unit now, not the boss. And uh, trying to use a little amoeba ability and some lightning. They end up taking me down. They run me over right there. <laughs> I love that. This game really feels like a combination of Friday the 13th and, like, Left 4 Dead. And, uh, you know, I'm not a huge Evil Dead fan specifically, but uh, I really enjoyed it. You know, get that AoE lightning in there while they're all together. And they've completed the ritual and got, what, the pages here? So they basically kicked me away. Luckily enough, it spawns me right next to the other point of interest that does not always happen. But that gives me plenty of time to now trap up this area in, you know, kind of anticipation for them coming over here. So I just basically go to every trap site I can, plant them all down, get as much of the red orb energy as I can built up. Again, remember, if they activate, you know, the artifact, you will get just recharging energy passively. But, uh... Start putting points into traps here in the level up because I noticed that they're going to be kind of coming into this area and hitting a lot of them. This is the final POI before like the final events of the map would normally start up. So basically wanted to kind of improve my traps a little bit there because I know they're going to be hitting a bunch of them. And uh, we get this whole area trapped the hell up. Now these traps probably helped win me the match here. I don't think I would have won if I didn't set them up. Now this is again just to give a little kind of play gameplay tip for the survivors they have 13 minutes left and they probably should be spending this time finding healing and ammo and whatever else they may need instead of bum rushing this spot because i did a lot of damage to them in the last little kind of king of the hill set sequence but i don't think they spent enough time doing that it says they're close already so i just go into this crashed airplane you know the wreckage area and start trapping up everything that leads up to here this is kind of where they're approaching from and again i just want as many zombies on the field as possible to get their fear levels up so this is kind of the strategy here and again you know no matter who you're playing as i would assume this is still what you're going to want to do it's kind of set all these traps for them i can see on the map this is the direction they're coming from get traps max level there start setting some more and uh, I can go inside the wreckage, inside the plane, and start setting something there. Basically, no matter what route they take, I want it covered where they are trapped up. So I even start trapping the boxes here in case they open it looking for healing, anything like that. There's actually some hilarious animations. I recorded a couple other games, but uh, in the effort of keeping this video short enough, I'm really only including this one game in this video, but we got some people with some hilarious traps earlier. They even have a different strategy on one of my other games where people split up and did two on two and we're activating the dagger and the pages at the same time and i was able to kill two of them then go to the other site and kill the other two because they couldn't put up enough of a fight to stop me when i was playing as the boss basically they're approaching here the point of interest now they're hitting a ton of the traps that i have put down this chick is terrified so i just got the red aura but she just keeps running away so i can't get any damage on her so like aoe lightning over there started hitting these guys she was dodging a lot so I kind of just said, fuck it, let me switch targets. And you just kind of want to be all over the place, interrupting people. You don't necessarily need to always you know, be focusing one person. You know, I say that, you know, that's contradictory to what I said earlier, but that's during the King of the Hill sequence. I definitely would focus target, you know, in that situation and try and take people down one by one. But when you're just kind of following them throughout the map, you know, feel free to try and liberally deal damage to everybody and waste all of their resources. So that should clear that up. Kind of just wasted that power right there to get closer to them. But, um, you know, kind of worked out, I guess. He was already afraid. We possessed him to waste some time while she's picking up this person. He's kind of upgrading my portals even more now to get them cheaper. 
I don't have enough points to really stop them from picking that person up, which is something you may notice, which is you gotta resource and budget this infernal energy well. But now at this point, they've activated the blue portal, so I'm just summoning a bunch of adds, basically the same as the last sequence, but they're much worse off this time around. And we bring the boss back in this time, and they're not gonna be able to handle it. So they don't have enough heals left, and this dude is just so thick. He's so strong. Boss character. Teleporting around zapping people. Alright, one down. And at this point, I am kind of body camping. Because they're all, you know, pretty exhausted at this point. I want to keep them from reviving their friend. So anytime someone goes for the revive, I start trying to prevent that. And it's also pushing them out of the edge of the circle. Which is, I'm sure, you know, helping my effort. You know, she's low. So I just start summoning more. They killed my boss there. Start summoning the elites and taking possession of them because they have the good AoE lightning also. Bam! Hit everybody there. So they did, were able to pick up their buddy. Now I'm chasing this guy outside the circle. I said, no, let me turn around. Keep focusing on the people in the circle. If he's not much of an issue if he just healed. I want to pick a new target that's at lower health. Try and get people down, basically. So while I'm stunned, I went in and bought a power for infernal energy. You, know, you gotta time your buying of points well. You don't obviously want to do it in the middle of combat, but it, you know when you're dead or stunned, it's a great time to do it. Activate some traps there. That one is just luckily right inside the circle. And just keep something elite and taking possession of them. Support character. I, I don't even actually know if this is a support character. I don't play this with humans very much, but she's real low. So I'm trying to go for her. Actually, everyone kind of low. They kill me again. Fly inside the blue circle, get some regeneration on the infernal powers. There's, there's traps, luckily, inside this blue circle, so that worked out really well. And I didn't have any summons up, so I took possession of Ash. And people are kind of invincible when they're in their kill animations, so I kind of got screwed a little bit there. But them shooting their friend to stop him, to kick me out of the possession, <laughs> allowed them to uh, knock him down. Great. Now I just come into the fresh elite. Zap him. He's down again. She's trying to pick up. Hell no. Down to you. And there's one stubborn survivor. One guy still up here. He's trying to buff himself up here, make him stronger, use his powers. I can do that too. He's splitting his two because I need the powers. He instantly killed that thing. Should have done it when I was at full health, I guess. So at this point, I didn't have an elite up, so I just took control of a regular berserker dude. Uh, you can, like, rip your head off and throw it at people and blow up, or you can manually explode. That dude was able to uh, get out of the radius of the explosion there. If I can fear him, you know, make things worse for him. And take control of another elite. So, as you can see, you know, different little phases in the game, and uh, you want to approach each situation differently. Kind of start the beginning, hovering over the two points of interest that you can see, laying traps. As soon as someone gets in a car or does something to make noise or reveals themselves on the map, they then want to gravitate over to them and start hampering their progress as much as possible. Now there is a little segment on the tail end here where we go into like the upgrades page and we look at that for a little bit. I think some of that information is pretty useful, but again, when you're buying upgrades for whatever class or you know character you want to play as, it's really only dependent mostly on your play style. Now I say that this early on because there is no meta established in the game. However, I have noticed that getting some of the stuff at the bottom, some of the utility power-ups are very, very powerful. So if you'll notice some of the stuff at the bottom two rows will basically do things to you know, increase your power gain, like various things to decrease the amount of you know power it takes to possess something. The top like four rows are all damage buffs mostly. They have some utility, like reduce cooldowns and stuff like that as well. But they're mostly like offensive related buffs. The two rows at the bottom are very, very utility oriented. They're nothing like active abilities or damage buffs or anything like that. To my knowledge, you know, based on my observations. And that's kind of where I dumped most of my points starting out. But again, I kind of like to evenly distribute stuff. So again, there'll probably be a meta that shows up at some point for this, but uh, that's where we're at, y'all. Hopefully, if you were interested in picking this game up and playing it as the Deadites, 
you will have some more information on what you're generally supposed to do because the game does kind of assault you with a lot of information and uh yeah it definitely makes it a little complicated picking it up brand new so again hopefully this was helpful if you enjoyed it consider liking and subscribing to the channel uh, my video uploads are really kind of random and all over the place but hopefully i can keep you informed and entertained i appreciate you and i'll catch you on the next one peace out